The meeting of the North Korean and Russian leaders has been closely watched by the international media. We now connect to our Oh Soo-young standing by for us to take a look at some of the reports making the headlines. Soo-young, what are some global media outlets take on this landmark exchange? Well, Tan, the headlines show that there's not much need to read between the lines. Following the first ever summit between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian President Vladimir Putin, reports from mostly Western media see the exchange as a move designed to show the US that it doesn't get to call the shots on the Korean Peninsula. CNBC quotes an expert who says Thursday's meeting helps the young dictator demonstrate that he has options apart from Washington after the summit in Hanoi between Kim and Donald Trump fell through without an agreement. Japan's Kodo News also remarked that Kim Jong-un likely wants the Kremlin's backing for its negotiations with the United States on denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula. To recover from the failure in Hanoi, the New York Times suggests Kim is seeking to reaffirm his new image among his people as a global player. And it seems most news outlets sense that Vladimir Putin is also in it for self-interest. The South China Morning Post says Russia is seeking to raise its regional clout and it seems better positioned at the moment than China, which is involved in high-stakes trade negotiations with the US to endorse Kim's stance. Chinese state media, though, has not actively covered the meeting other than to uh, simply report that it happened. Now, it's clear most media outlets weren't expecting much substance from the summit, but saw it as a significant move on the diplomatic chessboard. So what move are they anticipating next? Well, prior to the summit, there was much speculation about the uh, possibility of Kim and Putin discussing economic issues, such as some easing of sanctions on North Korea as well as trade and cooperation. The BBC says the summit is also an opportunity for Pyongyang to show that its economic future does not solely depend on the US. The UK's Guardian noted that Pyongyang hopes to procure Russia's electricity supplies and capital to modernize its outdated industrial plants, railways and other infrastructure, while Russia would like broader access to North Korea's mineral resources. At the same time, most reports cast a doubt on the Kremlin's ability to immediately broaden cooperation with the North, as it has signed on to UN san sanctions I'm sorry, against Pyongyang's nuclear program. The Wall Street Journal noted there was no public promise from Moscow of economic assistance to mitigate the pressure of sanctions. The Associated Press, meanwhile, quotes a Moscow-based expert who says Putin will likely encourage Kim to continue constructive talks with the US and that Russia can't really be expected to side with the North all the way amid the global pressure against the North's nuclear program. So according to these reports around the world, it looks like Thursday's meeting has been more significant for optics rather than producing a concrete course of action. Our Oh Soo-young for us tonight on the global reaction to the landmark summit between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian President Putin. Thank you, Soo-young.